Okay, listen. It was we had you we had Barb McQuaid talking about the Hi. Michigan case and your your tweeting was hilarious. You said if you're not watching the sanctions hearing for the Kraken crewy, you're missing Lidwood throwing everyone under a very long freight train. You said the Kraken QE is taking an awful beating in this hearing. Ms. Powell remains deeply sedated. I mean, she was is- unbelievable. She sat there motionless <laughs> for the better part of an hour and a half. Right. She looked like I don't know, you know, she looked like Baylock, the big puppet on that Star Trek episode <laughs> with Clint Howard. She's, I swear to God, she looked exactly like him. And then at one point she put up her hand because she wanted to say something. Yeah. And it was like breaking news. You said, uh, how could any of you as officers of this court produce this before the court? A question you never want to hear from a judge when your professional license is on the line. Kraken hearing. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, I asked Barbara if she's ever seen anything like this, and she said no, not in her legal well, career. Well, the, the, the best part was when the court reporter lost it. Oh, yeah? The, the, oh, the, yeah, the, the lawyer for the Kraken lawyers, they were represented by counsel, kept interrupting the lawyer from the city of Detroit. Yeah. Uh, finally, the court reporter yelled, stop this right now! <laughs> It, unless you want a bad transcript, because I can't take this down. We've been here since 8.30 in the morning. I can't take this down if you're going to talk over each other. Oh, my God. That's, I have never seen that in any courtroom ever. That's fantastic. That is. Just... And the great thing about it is Judge Parker, the federal judge, Linda Parker, who was presiding over this clown, clown show, just let the, let the court reporter roll. I yeah. mean, it's like, you know, she's with me. <laughs> It's and hilarious. we've had enough of this. Hilarious. Oh yeah, it was and great. I, you, mean, I don't know who this is. One of the one of the Kraken lawyers uh, was close to tears throughout most of the hearing. Oh my god. Uh, um, this woman, Linda Holler, uh, is you know she's got the gallows in her eyes regarding her career right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, Lynn Wood was desperately trying to disassociate himself from everything. Yeah. Yeah. And as I said, you know, Sidney Powell was heavily sedated. Yeah. You, uh, I, I don't know who this right winger was that tweeted. There's a reason Democrats are going after Rudy Giuliani, Matt Gates, Sidney Powell, and Lynn Wood at the same time, while the NSA is spying on Tucker Carlson, while the DOJ FBI detains Trump supporters in a DC jail for months without charging them. And you just said they're all guilty as, <laughs> just to, uh, perhaps that's why. I mean that couldn't that in, you know that could be actually, but uh, no, it's I uh, know uh, it was it was really something, and I, I'm happy. For my Twitter family, because they're the ones who tipped me off that there was a live stream of this thing. I didn't know that. Yeah. I was watching the live stream from the Texas legislature. And of course, that became, you know, incredibly boring because the Texas legislature fell apart. Right. All the Democrats went to Washington. Yeah. Yeah. That, I mean, I was saying, take a page, Senate Democrats, right? This is what some balls look like. This is what, you know, fighting Democrats look like. I mean, it's, it's no less a bold move in that it's the only one they had left. Right. They couldn't do anything else. Right. Right. Well, okay. Can we talk about because you brought up Giuliani? I just have to for a minute. So this whole I didn't. You did. <laughs> well, it was in that tweet you were responding to. So I this new book is just it's great. The, the big lie, which this obviously all these lawsuits are about, um, in which uh, Trump claimed he uh, 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 won the election. Uh, Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, set up his own command inside the White House on election night. After a while, Giuliani started to cause a commotion. He was telling other guests that he'd come up with a strategy for Trump and was trying to get into the president's private quarters to tell him about it. Some people thought Giuliani may have been drinking too much. Mm -hmm. Uh, And he suggested to his uh, Trump's team, uh, they took him to the map room to hear him out. Reporter Giuliani went state by state. Um, Meadows and Miller with them about the latest results. When they responded, the Michigan was too early to the call. Giuliani said, just say we won. Same with Pennsylvania. Just say we won. Giuliani's grand plan was to just say Trump won. State after state based on nothing. Stepien Miller and Meadows thought his argument was both incoherent and irresponsible. Wait a minute. Then, Stephen Miller thought he was being irresponsible? Right. Yes. That was the punchline of that segment. And so, Holy cow. That's, but then we've heard this that, one. that's when you know how far from the pack you have actually strayed. <laughs> When Stephen Miller thinks you've, you've gone to too far, 
Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Well, so then we've seen this before when Trump freaked out and dropped a bunch of F bombs when Fox called Arizona yes. for Biden, correct? Um, so at that point, Giuliani encouraged him to forget about Arizona and just say he won uh, by de- walking into the East Room and delivering a victory speech. Just go declare victory right now. You've got to declare victory now, which is exactly what Trump did after having listened to a drunken Rudy Giuliani on election night. And that's how we have the big lie. Isn't that well, fantastic? That was, yeah, that, I mean, cert- that certainly was the beginning of it. Uh, right. I just, you know, it, it, it's a lot of, there's a lot of comic opera to this, but there's a lot of stuff in it that's very, very serious. Yeah. Because I mean, it's going to live on after he disappears from the stage. Well, you t- we talked about this yesterday, Charlie. You wrote a whole piece about how frightening this is. What is it called? The, can I have my organ, please? Thank you. Uh, the Mercy Culture Faithful are devoted to a man as inarguably the biggest heathen, heathen ever elected to public office uh, in the history of the country. That's only slightly terrifying. But this is really some Handmaid's Tale stuff. But the, it's the whole God made Donald Trump presidency and the president and yeah, it's now, right. I, again, it's again, it's not again, it's not anything new. This is you know the right. you know Christian Dominionists have been around for years. Uh, in fact, Michelle Goldberg, the great columnist from the New York Times, the first time I ever became aware of her was she wrote a book about this years yeah. ago during the Bush administration, yeah. which now seems like you know shortly after the Garfield administration which lasted 11 right. minutes now yes. that I think about it. But uh, anyway, uh, yeah, you know, but there seems to be more of a focus and a much sharper point on it this time around. Well, it, but you were saying, I think you mentioned that a lot of the Capitol rioters, obviously there's a really terrifying thing in that. And they think God sent them that this is, I mean, it's all wrapped up together in a sort of. Well, there's one woman who's already told the judge that she doesn't recognize the judge's right. authority. Yes. We broke that down uh, because she's good. she's on a mission from from God from you know yeah human on Jesus right well and I had not you pointed out uh, one of the people this mercy culture said um, can you imagine if every church took a more active role in society if every church took ownership over their communities there would be no homeless no widows no orphans and you said I don't know how they're going to manage that whole no widows thing do they mean that no husbands will ever die if so praise Jesus but. <laughs> I mean, it's they're advocating the complete takeover of society by this religion. Yes, they cult. they are, yes. they are advocating a, a a Christian theocracy based, right. by the way, on their own interpretation of what Christianity is. Right, right, right. I mean, there's no one Christian position, and I'm, I'm I know I'm I'm edging into feudal sang territory here. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's no one Christian position on, you know, school prayer, because there's no one Christian position on Christianity. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. I mean, as, as well, endless centuries of European bloodletting will indicate. Well, I mean, I think in your next piece, Charlie, it's more about just the whole party's, you know, descent into crazy town. You said Lisa Murkowski has angered Trump with her insistence on staying relatively sane. She, the ex-president has endorsed her opponent. And as you say, that opponent is a family sized bag of nuts who once wrote that gay people can work through the process of coming out of homosexuality through Christianity. Uh, and gay people should not be controlled by the once gay, always gay rhetoric used to advance political agendas. She once said the Twilight book and movie series is evil and we should not read or watch it. So, I I mean, it is amazing. The Hi, Steve Austin. Oh, Steve Austin just peed. This is Steve Austin just okay. chew, was chewing well, on your shoe. Okay, so. and now he just peed. Okay. <laughs> you need a Steve Austin cam very desperately. <laughs> Um, you got anyway. one on his head or something. Anyway, but I mean, this is where is this all going, Charlie? This just seems headed. To, 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 even the well, Trumpiest crazies I mean, are not Trumpies. Ha- in the past, what's happened is it just gets, you know, ameliorated into the general kind of boring mush of American politics. Yeah, you know, it's like you know, like the, you know, the Joshua Generation, all these other, th- you know, eruptions. You know, the, the original, you know, moral majority just became another, you know, another pressure group, another yeah. interest group, another facet of the but Republican it seems Party. Like they can't... The difference this time is nobody's pushing back. Right. It there seems like you, you can't be to, there crazy. There was resistance to the moral majority. Mm-hmm. Right. You can't be crazy and Trumpy enough. And I don't know. It just it <laughs> seems headed towards some crash in 2022 because it's just it, it's they have gone so right wing and so crazy and so extreme. And the only, you know, thing seems to be loyalty to Trump, who is. Yeah, the one, the really worrisome thing that happened over the weekend is what happened at that Katie Porter rally. Oh, yes. 
because that's you know that's straight 1930s. Yeah, you bring a group of you bring a group of thugs and you disrupt somebody's meeting. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's that's yeah. you know that should have taken place in a beer hall in Munich. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. No, it is it is getting uh, scary. Charlie, I'm sorry that your beloved is not here, but it's uh, I, uh, absence hey, makes the heart grow fonder. On. I'm very excited about Frangela coming on on Tuesday. Yeah. I know, I know. It's different. Everybody's it's very exciting. Um, Charlie, love you but, as but usual. But they're not going to be on Friday, right? They will not be here on Hopefully Friday. Hopefully your beloved will be here on Friday. We shall see. Oh, that'll be swell. There you go. All are, right. are we done now? We're done. I love you, Charlie. Hey, Steve Austin's a good boy. Steve He's Austin a is a good boy. boy. Except for that. He's a good boy. P, I have to clean up right now. Okay, love oh, you. That All right. <laughs> Bye. Because I was talking Charlie. to you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you.